I kind of took a back seat and I looked at um, Soul, the Pixar movie, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I I wanted to ask you because I don't know if this perpetuates that problem. Like you consulted on that film, but when that film wins a Grammy award for the soundtrack in the media, I only see Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. I see less about you. I see no Herbie Hancock, no Tia Fuller. And even if you guys act as consultants or like Tia Fuller was a member of the actual band. I mean, the reason why we pay Will Smith $80 million to voice a fish is the same reason why you and Herbie Hancock should have been on that movie poster. It's star power. I don't even, I didn't even know that Herbie Mm -hmm. Hancock was involved in soul Mm -hmm. until this week. And I feel like your names could have only improved the marketing for the film. Mm. Yeah. But you know, (laughs) like everything else, I mean, they were very respectful, you know, to us. And uh, but like everything else, I think um, you know they're they're going for the you know the, the names of people that they feel uh, are more connected to you know, mass the masses to pop culture. So like Questlove and um, even John Batiste, who's on a TV show, right? So this is before his record success, but um, yeah, and then the actors. Uh, yeah, I mean, could they have used our names a little more? Sure. Uh, but I, I, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect any more than, than what happened. And they were very, very nice to us. I was just appreciated that they called us for consulting, that they trusted us to listen to what we had to say. You know, I think the one thing about Pixar is they really go deep with, um, their research to make sure that they're getting it right as right as they can. And um, I really appreciate that because I don't think everybody does that. I think so too. I I'm shocked. I'm still shocked by that 1% number. So if they made a whole film based on a genre that 1% listens to, I think that's (laughs) monumental in itself. I mean, uh, it's going to take me a few days to marinate with that number. That's incredible. Um, You know, (laughs) Yeah. In, in 1959, yeah. six years before you were born, the Grammy Academy created the category for best jazz instrumental album, and you were the first female musician to win a Grammy in this category, and it took 54 years to do it. <laughs> if I ask you why, would there would there be a painfully obvious answer to that, or do you think there are some reasons that might surprise people? <laughs> well, I think it's painfully obvious, actually. You know, like you said it earlier, I think misogyny... You know, boys club. I mean, who's defined as the creators of the music and the serious players? For the most part, it's always been men, with a few exceptional women. And we have to get out of that uh, idea of exceptionalism uh, as being a good thing. The why is, is, is yes, incredibly obvious. You know, it's, this, it's the thing that makes us struggle with you know, who, who had record deals, like who was marketed, who was, was taught from the beginning that this is their music and they can, you know, make a living doing this and they can be geniuses. (laughs) You know, I mean, just, let's just, some men just have had the support and the space to develop their craft because people looked at them as geniuses or potential geniuses and women, you know, weren't necessarily looked upon the same way when if they were, took an interest in jazz or had the, the talent. And, you know, I think it's part of that goes back to in the beginning, men playing music was a respectable uh, living. Like after slavery, you could finally travel. Before, you know, while slavery was happening, right, you couldn't travel if you were African American. But then you could travel, so you could take your guitar and. Uh, you know, go stand, you know, on the corner and play and, and get some money or go find a juke joint or go to a club or, you know, go to another state. Um, but women couldn't do that because it wasn't safe. 